by Ms. Chunks. Chapter 5. How was it for you? The morning after Otako's first training session with Bakugo, she finally gets asked about it by the person she's been dreading the question from most. Good morning, Uraraka. Deku is in top spirits this morning, and for a blissful moment, Otako thinks she might get away with her willful naivety. This lasts about three seconds, then pops like a soap bubble. So, how'd it go with Kachan yesterday? Oh, you know, good. Otako doesn't believe for a minute that she'll get away with this, but it buys her some time to think of anything else to say. Luckily, Deku relieves her of the burden and offers up. He's pretty amazing, isn't he? Yeah. It's easy to agree, a little too easy, and Ochako trips into a stiff chuckle. <laughs> Almost makes me wonder why he's bothering when he's so much further ahead than me. It's pitched awkwardly, a joke that never quite happens. Ochako rubs the back of her neck even more uneasily. Well, that's not true at all. Deco's ceaseless optimism is in perpetual motion. You're really amazing, too, Deku beams, the pureness of his intention shining through. I'm sure Kachan recognizes it, and that's why he asked you. Deep down, Deku is truly living the fanboy dream in and amongst the heroes he adores. So when he says Ochako's amazing, and even Bakugo knows it, she actually believes him. Thanks, Deku. An irresistible smile lights up her face. You always know what to say. Oh, I don't know about that. Deku retreats bashfully, fiddling his fingers together and drawing inward. Maybe Ochako got a little too close. She subtly checks herself. I wish she'd ever want to train with me, but we always end up fighting. For a second, Ochako thinks about telling Deku that Bakugo fights everyone. She has plenty of aches today as proof of that. But she knows it's different with those two. The fight between Bakugo and Deku never stops. Ochako pictures Bakugo's hand stuck out in front of her yesterday, not in attack or to make use of her quirk, but to help her up. And as much as it frustrates her to know this, she's certain Bakugo wouldn't be the same way with Deku. They walk the rest of the way to the classroom together, and Deku's lightness slowly sinks down. Ochako senses him getting pensive, the quiet murmurings as he mouths through his thoughts like hard candy. It isn't until they're at the last turning that Deku says anything clearly. Uraraka, I know that Kachan and I don't always get along so well. It's weird to hear Deku say it, but Ochako knows it's progress if the two of them can understand each other enough to have a similar view of where their shattered and re-glued piece-by-piece vase of a relationship is at. Yet Deku will never give up believing he and Bakugo can be friends in the long term. That optimism might be the true source of Deku's power, because it is truly inextinguishable. A little mumbling later, Deku reaches the conclusion of his thought. However... That just makes me even more happy for the both of you. It does? Ochako wonders what Sue would make of this conversation if she overheard it. It's, it's really not that big of a deal. In fact, Bakugo specifically told her so. Don't be so hard on yourself, Deku is starting to beam again. I think it's a positive step for Kachan. They're so close to the classroom but instead of trailing off into a mumbling pool of consideration again, Deku stays focused on the very thing Ochako's hoping he wouldn't get around to. So, what kind of stuff did he want to do? Ochako stalls and is beginning a vague sound of deliberation when from right behind them comes a quick, Out of the way, Deku! Oh, Kachan! Regardless of Bakugo's greeting, Deku seems as happy to see him as ever, chock full of puppyish optimism. I was just asking Uraraka about your training after school yesterday. I hear it went well. Bakugo's focus zones in on Ochako like laser sights, and she fires back a sturdy I didn't say anything look that holds for long enough for Bakugo to turn back to Deku. None of your lousy business, fuckface. 
it's overkill. As it always is with Bakugo and Deku. But Otaku is standing right there and she's not letting it slip. <laughs> Deku was just asking, she scolds in a tone that instantly gets Bakugo's attention. Exactly like I told you people were going to. So what? Bakugo shrugs. You don't have to answer. Ochako sighs and blows a wisp of hair out of her eyes, inadvertently rolling them in the process. You would say that. The fuck's that supposed to mean? Bakugo sinks deeper into aggression, shattering any notion of being more personable with Ochako outside of training. Never mind, we're gonna be late. Ochako has no sooner started to say the word than Ida's head pops out, almost perpendicular to the door frame, glasses shining with early morning vitality. Hurry, classmates! There's only 15 minutes until the beginning of homeroom! Each term. The time Ida thinks they should be in class, just to be safe, seems to get a little bit earlier. By graduation, he'll surely be arriving at the classroom five minutes after the end of the previous day's classes. Bakugo makes a derisively huffy sound <laughs> that Ochako pays no mind, starting to hurry with Deku in the direction of Ida's signpost-like head. But halfway down the corridor, Bakugo suddenly finds his voice. Wait. His tone is low and specific, cutting through the hallway chatter. Ochako knows he means her instinctively and stops mid-step, turning over her shoulder to face them with a look that simply says, What? As usual, Bakugo doesn't fail to surprise. Sunday, right? Ochako wonders what any of the wheels turning in Bakugo's head even are, much less how they've worked together to come to this conclusion. It's a surprise after being as grouchy and snappish as always. Bakugo not only wants to check on their plan, but will do so in broad daylight. And more to the point, in the middle of a busy school corridor, the peculiarity strikes Ochako like a wave, overwhelming the better part of her faculty to reply. Um, yeah, she comes out with awkwardly. Of course. That's all Bakugo seems to want from her as he <clears throat> and moves on. As class begins, Ochako finds herself dwelling on what Deku said, how training with her could be good for Bakugo, and just what Sunday would bring. The weekend arrives in an ungainly rush, and before Ochako knows it, she's packed a workout bag and setting off the first thing to the training area she and Bakugo used before. As expected, he's already there. She never saw him at breakfast and wonders how long he's been going when she shows up. Bakugo is wearing similar workout clothes to the other day, though the sleeves on today's vest dangle much lower on his arms and his sweatpants are noticeably tighter. Perhaps that'll keep them on. Ochako can only hope. Ochako isn't wearing her jumpsuit, but has her bracelets and boots as a precaution against getting too nauseous. Throwing up in front of Bakugo is low on the list of things she would like to happen at this session. Though the things that Ochako would like to happen is more of a blank slate. A totally blank slate, actually. Bakugo starts, as he often does, at about Mach 6. I want to go higher this time. His hand is already sticking out, but Ochako keeps her fingers to herself. I've been thinking about that, she says a little more timidly than she practiced without Bakugo's fiery presence right in front of her. Instead of blowing up everything when you land, why don't I catch you? This somehow comes across as a surprising notion to Bakugo. What? As long as I touch you before you land, you'll float. I'll slow down. Bakugo makes this sound like a criminal offense. Everyone needs a way to stop, Ochako suggests more reasonably than such an inalienable fact merits. I mean, keep on blasting the training area to bits if you really want to, but we both know you can't bust out those moves just anywhere. Ochako ends up sounding like she's making the dire mistake of trying to talk to Bakugo as if she knows better than him, so tries to soften it with a far less certain, I just figured a less explosive landing might be useful. There's more intimidating than awkward silence before Bakugo points out, if you're catching me, then you gotta be where I land. His pragmatism is refreshing. It's clear, 
or at least Ochako feels pretty sure, that Bakugo is more interested in practical applications of their quirks than measuring up anyone's ego. Perhaps he even sees Ochako as a way of getting stronger, she dares to think. Or you could come to me. Bakugo seems to bristle at the notion, but doesn't actually object. Setting into a thoughtful grimace as he mulls it over for a moment. I'll come. But you need to think about ways of getting around fast enough to keep up. Bakugo sounds like he's reading off a field evaluation. Handing out notes for his partner, who really ought to be listening more to what he's saying than pondering his motivation for being there. Bakugo flaps his open palm at her impatiently. Tag me in. Ochako has already touched her fingers to Bakugo's hand when she feels compelled to clarify what's about to happen. So, am I catching you? Bakugo gives Ochako a sideways glance down the meaty length of his arm, his hair subtly lifting as gravity stops applying to him. You fucking better! The thought arises in Ochako's mind that if anyone could use jet blasts coming out of their palms to rocket through the air like a flame-throwing drone, it'd be someone with arms, with shoulders, like Bakugo. Then Ochako changes her train of thought, like skipping a track, throwing herself into the sprinting away from Bakugo before anything bad happens. I'm going to that building, and then I'll come back. Bakugo actually explains before he blasts off. Drop me after I blast off from the far end, just like before. Ochako responds from a safe distance away, popping out from the sturdy road barrier type installation with a trusty thumbs up. Gotcha! Bakugo stalls for a moment like he's snagging on a roughly formed thought that he doesn't know how to articulate. It comes out as, this might hurt if you screw up. For whatever reason... Perhaps the concept of Bakugo actually thinking about her welfare is like having shoes on the wrong feet. The only response that comes to Ochako is, hurt too. Bakugo makes a face like he's offended Ochako even thinks it's a question. While Ochako and Bakugo both understand plenty well he's not indestructible, that doesn't stop him from pretending otherwise. Just be ready for me to come at you hard. Okay! Oh, Ochako cuts off as she realizes how weird the decontextualized comment sounds. But before she's able to feel anything about it, Baka goes blasting off, speeding away from the ground alarmingly fast from even a small explosion. Ochako watches Baka go land several stories up on his feet, but vertically up the face of the building. Otako doesn't know how much nausea Bakugo's getting from throwing himself around like this, but if he is, then he's not letting it show one bit. Otako stretches her hand out to either side, exaggerating her movements a little before bringing her fingers in to almost touch, ready for Bakugo to shoot off again moments later, rocketing towards Otako with the same aggression he was breaking apart whole buildings earlier this week. Release! Bakugo's warning about the possibility of getting hurt suddenly becomes very real to Ochako as she touches her fingers together and releases her quirk. Prior to that moment, Bakugo is just hurtling up, but as soon as his weight returns, he throws it into a headfirst dive coming straight at her. Ochako reminds herself that she did this once before, and if Bakugo keeps his pants on, then surely it constitutes his improvement on the last time. The thought isn't very comforting, but it's all she has. True to his word, Bakugo aims towards Ochako like a homing missile targeting the source of annoyance. He's even faster than she remembers, and a lot more frightening. Ochako steadies herself and puts her hands up to brace for impact, although Bakugo will be excluded from gravity and weightlessness once more when she re-engages her quirk. Only the momentum from the pull of gravity will be negated, meaning the rest of Bakugo's kinetic energy propelled by his explosions, is another matter entirely. Catch being the operative word, Ochako squares up and sets up for Bakugo's impact. Holding one hand aloft, fingers splayed, Ochako's palm claps against the center of Bakugo's chest as the essential first contact she needs to engage her quirk. 
When they fought in the sports festival, Ochako exhausted herself and couldn't lay a finger on Bakugo. But now he's on her side making sure they touch. Otako's other hand goes to Bakugo's shoulder as he hits like a bulldozer that's been launched from a catapult, heels skidding backwards over the ground as she braces against the impact. Ochako stays on her feet, just, and doesn't take another breath until they finally come to a stop, almost at the gate of the training area. The oxygen she was missing out on floods her brain as Ochako notices this. Bakugo's heart is pounding fit to burst. For a single crazy second, Ochako wonders if it's for any other reason than Bakugo just shot himself at her like a missile strike and she actually caught him. Then o Ochako realizes she doesn't need to be touching Bakugo anymore and stops. Release! Bakugo drops a couple of feet to the ground where he finally stopped, giving himself a canine shake as he draws himself back upright. I guess that's useful. The evaluation is ambivalent. But a fair assessment. To be anything but fair would compromise the ultimate goal of this training, which is to get stronger. Bakugo wants to work with Ochako to get stronger, and she'd pinch herself if it wouldn't make her look even weirder than he already thinks she is. I'll wear out my boots if we do that too much. Ochako rambles as she shakes what sounds like a lot of grit out of her footwear, designed for impact but not necessarily as a set of brakes. She might have to apologize to the support department for that one. Bakugo is drawn carefully in thought. Rather than paying much notice to Ochako's open space chatter, she's expecting a non sequitur, so Bakugo's query of what if you weren't on the ground doesn't make sense to her the first time around. Where would I be if I'm not on the ground? <sighs> Bakugo makes a face. In the air, idiot. Unfortunately, Ochako realizes exactly what Bakugo means this time, but sort of wishes she didn't. It is the reason she wore these boots and bracelets today, but so far the light load on Ochako's quirk has been a quietly appreciated blessing. Of course, Bakugo doesn't go easy on Ochako, so she starts stealing breath. You want me to catch you while I'm making myself float? <sighs> Obviously. Bakugo scorns. What do you think will happen? If I knew, then I wouldn't want to try it. Bakugo snaps in a feat of inescapably angry logic, then turns around and starts walking back to the center of the open space they're based in. A pile of their bags tucked behind a well-blasted concrete barrier. He stops in the middle and then turns back to watch Ochako approach. Arms crossed and a disgruntled look that she's sure is his default thinking face. Bakugo has unfolded his arms again by the time Ochako has reached him and seems content to begin without further negotiation. She supposes he doesn't think there's anything more to say, but this radically experimental approach is a little alarming when it's right in front of her. You ready? Bakugo checks that much at least, though his hand is still an open invitation held out in front of him. I guess so. Ochako layers her hand on his, activating her quirk and then skipping back a few steps. She's seen Bakugo do this a few times now, and if he uses the same control blast to launch himself, then she'll be safe from a few paces rather than needing to take cover. The hunch proves right, and a rush of hot air passes over Ochako as Bakugo shoots into space to land midway up the first tall structure. It's not exactly close. But Ochako is getting enough of a feel for Bakugo's timing not to wait for a verbal signal, dropping him a couple of seconds after he blasts off from the building face. Now comes the part Ochako's less sure of, where she wraps her arms around herself more for the mental comfort than the needed gesture and lifts off the ground. She fights the initial rush of nausea, dulled slightly by her support gear, but ever present in the pit of her stomach. Bakugo doesn't give Ochako much time to think about it, crashing down on her in a few hot seconds. There is one thing Ochako has to do, she tells herself, and that's use her quirk on Bakugo. Everything else in the terrifying unknown that could happen next is firmly beyond Ochako's control. She has one job to do, so she's absolutely going to do it. Bakugo comes down on Ochako like a hailstorm. 
but she's stable enough in the air, hands outstretched, that when Bakugo reaches out and wraps his hands quite firmly around Ochako's wrist, she instinctively returns the hold. Her fingers press into the iron force of Bakugo's forearms like hot blacksmithing tools from a furnace, and it's more than enough contact for Ochako to activate her quirk. Everything that happens after that is comparable to the experience of a sock inside a washing machine with a bunch of differently sized bricks going around in it. Ochako feels herself spin fully upside down and back around again, swinging along Bakugo in a pinwheeling fairground ride experience that does nothing at all for her nausea. Somewhere in the whirling vortex, Ochako decides it's in everyone's interest to get back down to the ground. Her mouth feels awkwardly dry as she quickly brings her fingers together, eyes screwed shut, even if it's just making things worse. Release! What happens after that feels akin to being flipped like a pancake during an earthquake. Ochako's inner ear sends her mixed messages, but seems to be regaining some stability as a very firm thump runs up from below. This is followed by a renewed sense of up and down again, even if nothing else makes much sense. Like... Why her dizzying landing impact should feel so cushioned. Ochako blinks a few times and distinguishes what she's looking at, which is an intimidatingly large, feeling up close Bakugo laying flat on his back directly underneath her. Tingling in Ochako's knees tells her she scuffed them, landing in this position over Bakugo, which is straddling him. The addition of a flock of butterflies to the disorientated laser party going on in Ochako's stomach doesn't do anything for the atmosphere in there at all. According to her most pressing needs, Ochako's first action is to put her hands on her stomach and start taking a series of very deep breaths, remaining dead still even if it happens to be in a slightly awkward position. Ochako achieves distraction from her sickness by a sudden and intense fixation on the practical side of their landing. Bakugo must have done it intentionally, going by the determined way he moved her just before impact. Arranging them this way around is one thing, but Bakugo landing on Ochako is an entirely more alarming thought. By controlling their fall to keep her from splatting to the ground like a sickly water balloon, Bakugo is applying the same principles to Ochako as he applies to his growth as a hero. She is an asset to his development and therefore to be taken care of. Certainly not to be squashed underneath and or thrown around like the ragdoll she feels like. Because to stop growing at UA is to fall behind. Ochako knows as well as anyone. That's why she's here too. However, Bakugo might feel under pressure to grow most of all, with the fear of losing his place at the top and drive to keep pushing himself when he's already so powerful and still has to find ways to be more. Ochako has seen more flashes of that frustration from Bakugo than Lunch Rush has cooked curries in almost two years at UA. Bakugo is still laid out underneath Ochako, and she hates that Sue's comment earlier in the week pops into her head about what people might think about her and Bakugo if they didn't know the truth, which is of pragmatically advantageous straddling, no funny business involved. However, Bakugo doesn't really help that impression when he cocks his head to one side, looking up at Ochako in a way that makes her feel innately conscious of herself, sat on top of him and asked, How was it for you? No. Bakugo really doesn't help that impression at all. End of chapter 5 Penny here. This episode has been sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's a creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer, and Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. 